Hey guys, so um, I was looking through my desk drawer today and I found this webcam and I thought, wow, like I could either use it to take like really emo pictures of myself and put them on the internet, or, or I could be older than 14 and uh, use it to um, tell you guys about my thesis research. So this is uh, my first attempt at video blogging, sometimes called vlogging, but I think that's a really stupid word. So we're just going to pretend that doesn't have a name at all and uh, jump right into things. So this nifty device right here is called a nebulizer. Uh, you've probably seen one. They're um, pretty standard medical technology. Um, and the way it works is you screw the top off, you fill it maybe about halfway up, you put some liquid in there. It's usually a drug that you need to administer directly to the lungs, um, like an albuterol or something that would, you know, um, treat um, your asthma or, you know, a chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, something like that put the drug in there, you screw the top back on, and you attach an air compressor right here, um, and the high pressure air flows through this little tube, comes out this really, really tiny hole in there, and uh, blows across the surface of the liquid and basically basically breaks the, some particles off. Um, and then those little, those aerosols are actually still kind of large um, for to be useful for inhalation, so they get smashed up against all this nifty, you know, nooks and crannies and stuff up here, which are called baffles, and that breaks the particles up even smaller um, until they're of a, you know, appropriate aerosol size um, that's pretty much optimized for delivery to the lung tissue. Um, so that's what this device does, and um, it's a pretty standard technology, uh, which is used usually to deliver drugs. Here's another model. It's the same concept. Uh, you put the liquid in, you put the air compressor. Again, there's a really tiny hole in there uh, where the air comes out. Um, same exact thing, it's just a slightly different mechanical design. So these things exist and they are really useful for delivering drugs directly to the lungs. But thanks to my research, no, actually thanks to lots of people who did work on this before me, um, it turns out that you can actually use these to administer vaccines, which is super useful because if you know pretty much anything at all, you know that uh, sharing hypodermic needles is not good news. Um, and a lot of times, uh, especially in the developing world, which is where a lot of uh, my, my, well, specifically my thesis, but a lot of the work that I'm, I'm doing in my concentration is focused on the developing world. Um, and a lot of times they just don't have the resources to properly use hypodermic needles. There just aren't enough of them to go around. Um, and so a lot of times, even if you know, a rural health worker in Africa might know, you know, they shouldn't reuse a hypodermic needle to vaccinate multiple people. Um, sometimes it just ends up happening anyway because they just don't have uh, enough materials to to do it safely. Um, and so it's the choice between, you know, risking uh, reusing the needle or, you know, not getting life-saving medication. Um, and so especially, especially in Africa where there's a huge AIDS epidemic, that's a, a big, big problem. So if we could figure out how to really effectively administer vaccines with a nebulizer, that'd be awesome because um, you can reuse this same device um, and vaccinate multiple people in a row, and it, you know there's no risk associated with that. Um, they're also pretty cheap. Um, they're easy to use. You don't really need to be trained in order to um, give someone a vaccine with this. You just you know plug it in, turn it on, and you give them. There's a an attachment that comes on with a mask, and you just you know have them breathe into the mask. Um, you don't need to, you know, know how to um, puncture someone's skin with a hypodermic needle, which is a pretty, you know, high-level skill. So if we could figure out how to do that, well, that would be pretty awesome. So that's what my research is about, basically trying to figure out um, what kind of um, parameter changes we can do, how we can manipulate this device to basically output the most effective vaccine aerosolization that we can. So um, Lately, this has been my bedtime reading. Um, this one is particularly fascinating, the physical and chemical properties of aerosols. I don't even, I, I can't figure out why it's not on the New York Times bestseller list, because it's fascinating. Um, you know, so I basically read these all the time. It's from, oh, I'm sleepy, I'm gonna go to bed. You know, it's called a good book. Once upon a time, um, there were predictive correlations for the sizes of nebulized droplets before, droplets before impaction on baffles. And uh, these can be used to suggest a number of generalizations that are probably reasonable for nebulizers. <laughs> that's really not very helpful. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm doing this research, because apparently uh, no one knows. Um, but oh, oh, this is a good one. Uh, so in the viscosity of liquids, theory, estimation, experiment, and data, which is another page turner, 
Um, I found this right here, which I you may not, maybe you can't see that, but that's probably good because I've probably just violated some sort of copyright. But it says, uh, Einstein proposed the following equation for the viscosity of a system consisting of perfectly. Look, the point is, Einstein. Okay. Um, and so I really, I really hope this equation is right or useful because then I can cite Einstein in my thesis and come on, that's cool, that's really cool. Um, so yeah, so that's what I've been doing lately, um, basically playing with these things, playing with a bunch of different sensors, talking about the temperature of the liquid and the air pressure that we put into the system and the relative humidity in the atmosphere and all kinds of stuff and, uh, basically setting up an experiment that is probably going to be done later in the summer. Um, so not part of my thesis, but um, what my thesis is making possible, which is kind of cool, um, where the, the group, a group at MIT is going to perform this experiment that I'm designing um, and try to figure out how to optimize all the parameters to make the best aerosolized measles vaccine that they can. And uh, they're going to use that information when they finish developing uh, a device that they are manufacturing to uh, use in developing countries. So um, hopefully, if I do a good job, um, this will actually have like a real positive impact on lots of people, and I think that's uh, pretty cool. So now that you know the basic story, um, I'm gonna go write the thesis, um, and there's a lot of that left to do. So don't expect to hear from me for like three days. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, as always, leave me comments because you know I love knowing that people care that I had anything to say, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, very first video blog. And probably last, because really, I'm graduating soon.